this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now this time we're going to be looking into the 24th episode of the third season of The Muppet Show, which features the one and only Cheryl Ladd. Now for those of you who don't know who Cheryl Ladd is, she actually began her career as one of the singing voices in the animated series Josie and the Pussycats. But then later on, she would go and earn an extremely prominent career onto television, appearing in numerous of shows, including The Rookies, The Partridge Family, Happy Days, Charmed, Hope and Faith, CSI Miami, Las Vegas, NCIS, Chuck, and so much more. But the role that really established herself in her career was actually replacing Farrah Fawcett in, um... Charlie's Angels. She actually would go on to be featured as uh, Chris Monroe. Now, going into the episode that she appeared in in The Muppet Show, it actually has a lot of great ideas, but the one thing I will say and go into detail more is that these ideas are just so good, I wish that they could expand upon them. Because in this one, there really isn't a story that they really focus much on, but they do have a consecutive sequence of gags that are happening, and most of which actually do happen backstage. But what is actually very coincidental is that most of the time we actually look onto backstage than what's going on on stage. And I'll just mention them right now just to get them out of the way. The ones that are on stage would include uh, Miss Piggy and Link Hogthrob in a bit of a Tarzan setting where they would sing True Love. And uh, it does have a lot of its comical moments, and especially with Link Hogthrob uh, trying to be all macho and stuff, but ends up failing miserably. Uh, but the one thing that I will say is a bit weird is that at the start of the sketch, you can tell that there is a bit of a um, wardrobe malfunction with Miss Piggy. I, I don't know if they paid attention at the start, but I guess afterwards, like, the Muppeteers would have to just go and fix up a bit of Miss Piggy's clothing because they kind of notice, uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit lower than it's supposed to be. Uh, but then afterwards, the, uh, another one is actually, once again, with Link and Miss Piggy in Pigs in Space, where it's actually pretty cute and it is enjoyable, where, uh, Dr. Strange Pork would appear with, uh, invisible pills, where, uh, he and Link would take invisible pills just to screw with Piggy for a bit. And, um, I'll leave the rest from there, but, uh, you can see for yourself how that would end up becoming. Uh, if there's anything else, honestly, not really. Uh, the rest is mostly connected with what would go on backstage or wh what would include with Cheryl Ladd. And in this one, uh, it actually starts off with Kermit discussing with the bust of Beethoven. Now, this is not the first time that this Beethoven bust would appear. He does uh, frequently be featured with Rolf every time that... Uh, not every time. Sometimes when he would be on the piano, he would just go and uh, just play the recital. And uh, maybe the bust of Beethoven, he would either sing along or he would make comments to what Rolf is doing. And what he was mostly doing in the episode, or at least in the first act or the first half was just mostly making a comment with what's going on backstage and uh, or i would actually say that it's mostly during the first half but then there's actually another story that does come in is when fozzy wants to go and he wants to improve upon his self-image like he wants to give give a bit more self-esteem upon himself and one of the things that he wanted to do was go to Kermit and ask him to make a list of all his good traits and all his bad traits. And if anything, it all turns out to just be a joke than anything. It's not necessarily a story that like drives the entire episode. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And then there is another one where Gonzo has this entire sketch of hypnotism in which he wanted to have the help of audience or just one member of an audience to go and uh, try to like to imagine himself as like this mighty muscle man holding like 5,000 pounds of like this giant weight with just one hand and um, 
that, that, like, I guess the rest can go from there. Now, I love all these ideas. They're definitely fantastic. Uh, the material that they've delivered on it is just hilarious and highly enjoyable. Especially with uh, the Fozzy story where he wants to make that whole list. Well, Kermit has to go make that whole list for Fozzy. But my biggest issue with it is that they're great ideas, but they're all crammed up in this one episode where it would have worked phenomenally if they would take these stories separately and place them in their own each individual episode where we would see the consequence of Gonzo like when he does his whole self-hypnotism and even beforehand where we see he was practicing his hypnotism onto some chickens. And then, um, like, we w it would have been great if we saw uh, the story of Fozzie Bear, like, in, in itself, where we just see him, uh, like, trying to make that note and all that stuff, and, uh, like, how, the, like, the rabbit hole can go deeper from there. Or we would see, like, an entire episode with Kermit just chatting with the bust of Beethoven with what's going on on stage or how Kermit is managing the entire show and all that kind of stuff. That would have worked as well. But because they took all these ideas onto this one episode, it kind of feels a bit like they're not exploring as much. I don't really want to criticize it as much because all these elements really do work. It's just I really would wish to go and see more, um, more depth into them. I wish I could see more of them individually. And then there is actually Cheryl Ladd, the special guest star. And with her, she doesn't necessarily stand out as much. She's more as your plain individual guest star who would go and sing and dance. Uh, there is one that she would start off uh, singing South Rampant. Uh, is it? Yeah, South Rampart Street Parade, which is more of your vaudeville type kind of show with a bit of a parade theme going on. And then afterwards, probably the one that does stand out in terms of her performance is when she would talk with Miss Piggy and she actually does admire Piggy's chops, like whenever she would do her martial arts move or just like when she gets mad and just hits Kermit. Uh, that is also, like, not only an enjoyable rendition of I enjoy being a girl, like, showing also their their physical strengths as well, but, um, it's also great to see the comedic aspect where, uh, Cheryl Ladd has this dummy to practice her moves on while Miss Piggy just brings in Kermit to do whatever they want. So that was, uh, highly enjoyable and a lot of fun to watch. And then at the end, you kind of got your more standard finale uh, where Cheryl Ladd would sing Sunshine on My Shoulders. Like, you got this nice little environment with a little fence and some trees, and most of the Muppets just coming out and just popping, uh, just to sing the backgrounds of the song. And she's mostly standard as a guest star, not necessarily the one that does pop out in terms of the whole episode in itself. It's more the backstory that kind of dominated on that. So overall, I would say this is definitely a lot of fun. This is a great episode. The only thing I do wish is that, like, they have great ideas, but I wish they could explore them more because the elements of the bust of Beethoven, Fo uh, Fozzie's list of good and bad things, and Gonzo's hypnotism, they would work phenomenally as its own episode. Like, when they would have a story-driven episode and just go from there, uh, the only problem is that they they have to pretty much cram all these ideas into one and honestly like they're well executed in itself but it's just a part of me would wish to see that they would go more into it explore more into what they can do but uh, that's honestly not that much of a criticism honestly it still results in a highly enjoyable episode something that is really a lot of fun to watch and, uh, including, like, being very hilarious at the same time. Uh, but anyways, that is pretty much it, not only for this episode, but pretty much for the whole season. I pretty much covered the entirety of Season 3. Now the only thing to do with, uh, the rest of the season is just look at all of it in one big shot. So, how does Season 3 compare with the rest of the episodes, or with the rest of the seasons? Well, we will only find out with the Season 3 review, so until next time, see you later, dudes!